are just at, right at our... I think that one thing that it, for an artist, they always start out doing something and then they make up the reason why later. So perhaps I've uh, had a premonition about the environmental movement since I myself was very environmentally conscious. I'm a sculptor, so I feel like anything that I do is sculpture. We weave over them, then we can cut them loose. I had to figure out what birds and beavers already knew, and that is that sticks have a good way of joining. They entangle easily, and that's really the simplest method of joining that, that we've used in this piece. Generally, I'll find a place uh, uh, nearby, near the sculpture site, where we can gather sticks. You try to find something that uh, where materials are being taken away or about to be taken away. I mean, I'll work with, uh, in this case, uh, Chinese tallow. See, so I'm always constricted by the material that I find. Um, a lot of times I longingly think of the long sticks from the last projects or the short sticks from the next project and wish I had them all on site so that I could make the perfect sculpture. Yeah, you can, you can fill it. The scale is everything in terms of making something feel like it sits at site well. Uh, in this case, uh, I decided on a maybe a set of hedges, a kind of a hedge garden as a basic uh, structural thing. Uh, I laid out the footprint on the ground. Uh, I dig holes around the size of that footprint, put some uh, structural sticks in there. Once I get a structural crust on it, then I go back as a second phase of kind of the aesthetics of it, putting sticks where they look good. I have the uprights in the ground in this case if the piece has to stand alone. Sometimes I'll use trees to work with or uh, buildings and the railings and so forth. But if I have these upright sticks, then I pull the shape that I want initially by tying it back to the scaffolding and interweave through these uprights as though you were making a basket of some sort. It's uh, much more elaborate than that, but still in all there's a kind of correspondence in, in basket making. Well, I always say the line between trash and treasure is very thin, but you've got one great year and one pretty good year. They're, they're stiffer than you would imagine if you go over there and you push your shoulder to it, which um, many of our visitors will try right off since it looks light and easy. They think, well, I'm gonna see if the, how strong this thing really is. So this happens time and time again throughout the day, people testing its metal. One of the great things about parks is that when people come here, they are on the lamb. They're out here just having a good time. They're willing to take a moment to look at something. One of the great things about the work is that it's built on site, so there is a kind of visual conversation with those people who walk nearby. And a lot of times the same users of the space will follow along and like have a lot of things to say about it as they go. You're living here. <laughs> I think my job is to do things that excite the imagination. That, you know, they have to stand on their own without words to describe them per se. And certainly you don't have to uh, talk to the public about it. They're each person at their own, uh, within their own capacity, looks at it in a different way.